Hardy Backer Cement Board's strength and durability make it perfect for use on floors. We recommend our quarter inch cement board for this purpose. Before getting started, you'll need to have the right tools and materials. Modified dry set cement mortar, also known as latex or acrylic modified thin set, and or dry set cement mortar for use between subfloor and cement board only. Two inch wide, high strength, alkali resistant glass fiber tape, corrosion resistant roofing nails, or minimum one and a quarter inch backer on screws. For hardy backer board to subfloor, use a quarter inch square notch trowel. For tile to hardy backer cement board, the appropriate trowel size will depend on the size of tile being set. The trowel manufacturer typically provides this guidance online or on its trowel labels. For cutting, a carbide tip scoring knife is recommended, but a regular utility knife will work as well. Shears, whether manual, electric, or pneumatic, are also an option. Before you begin, you should determine if your floor is suited for hardy backer cement board. The minimum thickness you should have is 5 8 inch thick exterior grade plywood or 23 32 inch thick OSB with minimum exposure 1 classification. If floor joist spacing is more than 16 inches on center, consult building code for appropriate subfloor thickness requirements. Do not install on joists more than 24 inches on center. If your floor meets the requirements, the next step is to ensure that it's structurally sound and free from damage. Be sure to replace any warped, missing, or uneven sections of flooring so that you have a flat and clean surface. Once your floor is ready, you're all set to cut your boards to the necessary sizes. Cutting hardy backer cement board is a snap, pun intended. For a step-by-step -step guide, check out our cutting video. Next, you'll have to determine the layout of your hardy backer cement board. Remember the 1 8 rule. Keep a 1 8 inch gap between board edges. Keep sheet edges 1 8 inch back from walls and cabinet bases. When laying out your hardy backer cement board, you're going to stagger all cement board joints in a brick laying pattern. Don't align them with subfloor joints and never allow all four corners of boards to meet at one point. Now you're ready to attach your board to your subfloor. To start, apply a supporting bed of mortar or modified thin set to your subfloor with your trowel. Using a sliding motion, firmly and evenly embed your hardy backer cement board in the wet mortar. Using the screw pattern as a guide, fasten your hardy backer cement board with nails or screws every 8 inches on center over the entire surface. Keep screws between 3 8 inch and 3 4 inch from board edges and 2 inches from board corners. Finally, set your screw heads flush with the surface. Be careful not to overdrive them. Before tiling, you'll want to tape the joints. Make sure you fill all the joints with the same mortar used to set the tiles. Next, embed 2 inch wide, high strength, alkali resistant glass fiber tape in the mortar and level. And that's it. Installing Hardy Backer cement board to a wooden subfloor is as simple as that. Hardy Backer cement board can be used with nearly any kind of tile whether ceramic, porcelain, or natural stone. To add your tile, take a damp sponge and wipe the surface of hardy backer cement board clean. Spread the modified thin set with a notch trowel appropriate for the size of tile you are installing. For best results, be sure to comb the ridges in one direction only. Twist or press and beat in tiles. Allow a minimum of 24 hours curing set time before grouting, and then you're done. Easy to use and backed by exceptional performance, Hardy Backer Cement Board is the choice for your next tile installation project. Find out why it's the most preferred brand of backer board today. Visit hardybacker.com for more info.